Welcome to Gradient's Weekly Business Roundup. Today's episode will cover the following topics. As per the latest rules gazetted by the Central Bank's Monetary Board, exporters of goods and services are required to convert the remainder of export proceeds received into rupees on or before the seventh day of the following month upon meeting the authorized payments. According to the Central Bank, due to an undue speculation on exchange rate movements, there has been a reluctance to convert export earnings during the period from January 2020 to July 2021. This has limited inflows to the domestic foreign exchange market, resulting in a build-up of foreign currency deposit balances with the banking sector by a significant US dollars $1.9 billion. The central bank governor stated that new strategies will be introduced to address challenges faced by the micro, small and medium-term enterprises due to the pandemic. Addressing a letter written by the industry's minister, Vimal Vidavansa, which highlighted that the majority of loans provided by banks were to large-scale trade-related businesses and lending to MSMEs is only around 15% in Sri Lanka compared to over 50% in Asian and SARC countries, the governor responded that the central bank is working on improving this situation, including extending the debt moratorium to be gradually phased out. China National Machinery Import and Export Corp, also known as CVC, is exploring the possibility of establishing a vehicle plant in Sri Lanka to manufacture MG, Sherry and Proton brands. A statement from the Sri Lankan Embassy in China further stated that CVC has already established an effective relationship with microcars of Sri Lanka. Moreover, CVC Vice President Wu Yi said that it was in the process of discussing an expanded joint venture with microcars. Presidential Secretary P.B. Jasundara stated at a media briefing that he sensed the 2022 budget may be non-traditional. Detailing further, Treasury Secretary S.R. Artigala noted that the upcoming budget will focus on cutting down fiscal deficit significantly to around 4.5 to 5 percent by reducing non-priority spending while maintaining adequate funds for the government's development projects. And in other news, Hobbify China, a Malaysian-owned company, is to invest 340 million US dollars in a project to export organic durian from Sri Lanka. The facility will be at a 200-acre land in Navalapitiya. Hobbify enters Sri Lanka via the acquisition of a company called In The Nature Limited. A gazette has been issued removing the maximum retail price controls on several food items such as sugar, dal, chicken and milk powder, among others. Sri Lanka has entered into an agreement with the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development of the World Bank Group to obtain a loan of USD 500 million to finance the inclusivity and development project which aims to develop Sri Lanka's road network, particularly in rural areas. The All Share Price Index at the Colombo Stock Exchange ended the week to 3rd November 2021 at 10,412.02 points, up 2.7% from a week earlier. Foreign selling persisted, with net foreign outflow reaching Rs 46.8 billion year to date. And in other market news, the central bank announced that it had fined People's Merchant Finance, Selang Bank and Ideal Finance a combined Rs 2 million in the third quarter of 2021, imposing penalties for non-compliance with provisions of the Financial Transaction Reporting Act. E-commerce platform Kapruka Holdings announced plans for an IPO offering a 20% stake at Rs 15.4 per share. The company intends to raise Rs 505.5 million. Lanwa signed an agreement to connect its 3 million ton Lanwa Sangsta Cement Corporation at the Mirijewala Export Processing Zone to the Hambantara International Port via a 2.4 km conveyor belt. And that's a wrap for today. Hope you have a great day. Stay safe and stay healthy.